Australia has a lot of unique and diverse habitats, from giant coral reefs to lush rainforests to some of the most barren deserts around. But one thing rings true, where there's water, there's light. Whether the intricate river systems, isolated billybongs, or tidal flats, unique life seems to abound from birds and fish to reptiles and unique species of non-native deer, like the Moluccan rusa. This hunt is quite a bit different than most my solo hunts. This trip was actually part of my honeymoon. My wife Danielle and I really wanted to explore this part of rural Australia while hunting and fishing. I know what you're probably thinking, how did he pull that off? His wife must be the most awesome person ever. And that is definitely true. I also really wanted to bring her along while I bow hunted to teach her more about bow hunting, the skills required to be successful, and what it takes to get close to animals as we hunted and explored the outback together. So we headed out with some friends to share a camp in this remote part of the world. What still hunting is, is that's just slowly moving through a patch of say, thick cover or an area real slow because when you're still hunting you're moving but you're also can only see a very short distance so you're walking stopping looking walking stopping looking now it only works if the wind's perfect so you'll start walking into the wind and as you notice the wind shifts then you shift your direction i don't really pick where I want to go but I just go with the wind I'm a lot more successful that way a lot of people have trouble they go oh I want to get to this spot because that's a good spot well I'd rather just work my way in the direction of the wind you'll be a lot more successful that way when you're still hunting you'll just take a few steps stop and look as you're walking your head's always up and you're always looking if you're looking down at the ground you're gonna miss the deer, they're gonna see you first. Let your feet feel the ground, you'll be much more quiet that way. You can even walk either barefoot or with your shoes off in a stocking shoe. And you just move slow, head up, and always looking around. The most successful hunters walk a certain way in the woods and that's alert with their head up, keyed into everything. But don't just use your eyes, you're gonna use your nose and your ears as well. You know, breathe through your nose, not through your mouth when you're hunting, because what that allows is it allows you to pick up the scent of an animal, like especially during the rut, a lot of stags or bucks or bulls, whatever, depending on what you're hunting, leave like markers with their scent. And sometimes you can even smell it off their body as long as you're hunting into the wind. Plus, you know, listen for unnatural noises or a stick breaking something. You just want to be keyed in and use all your senses as you're slowly moving paying attention to everything. If you're looking down, the deer have already spotted you and you've messed up. Some of the best hunters I hunt with, you can tell immediately if a guy knows what he's doing or not because he's, he's up, he's alert. His head's moving slow and scanning and always looking in every direction. Don't just focus in one place. Pretty decent trail here running to the water and then I've got this rub and a few tracks it's not a really heavily used trail this rub looks a little bit older but uh, it's hard to tell because the outside bark of these trees are is so dry anyways um, you can definitely tell it's been shredded by a stag so it's a good sign it seems to be that the water is the key to life in this area it looks like all the trails lead to the water and then back out into this thicker forest where they probably bed. Uh, the rusa is a highly aquatic type deer. Like they like to get into the water. They like to feed on the lilies and drink and roll around in the mud and wallow like a pig would or an elk would. And especially during the rut, that wallowing isn't to cool them down. It's to create a perfume so they urinate in the in the 
water and the mud and they roll in it and that keeps their scent not only there but on their bodies so when the hinds smell them they smell more dominant it's like a breeding trait so staying along this water edge there's there's a river system that works down away from this this lake here which would be a good spot for pigs and other things and if i see a really well used trail going into the water then i'll set up a camera that way I can know what kind of stags are in the area. During the middle of the day, we took a rowboat out to try and catch some fish for dinner. The fishing quickly turned to a hunt when the largest deer we'd seen the entire trip popped out just as we were getting to shore to walk to a new fishing spot. I'm literally shaking more than I shake myself. I'm so nervous. My heart was pounding out of my chest. That was so much fun. Wow. <laughs> it was cool. Three nice stags and one smaller stag just <clears throat> came out of the water on the other side here. It's just too bad they're going the wrong way and the wind's not good to stock over there. I don't really know where they're gonna move to or if it's just a fluke or if they like that little trail that's right there. I'm just gonna keep working this lake edge back and maybe catch something else coming out. There's a lot of good deer tracks down this river here. So I'm just gonna follow it to the lake. Um, just try to follow these trails and set up and see if I can't find something coming to cool down. It's getting hot. We've made our way to the water's edge here and where the lake ends, it looks like on the map, this river goes quite a ways down. It's a really good spot for deer and possibly pigs. I can see some tracks and places where the pigs have lay, lay in the water during the day. But the Rusa are a really quite an aquatic deer. They love to be around the water. So I think this is going to be a good place for the middle of the day. Maybe catch them bedding off into the, the bush on the edges and then coming out to drink and wallow. It's also a good place for crocs as I walked up. One just went under right there on the water's edge, maybe 60 yards away. So I'm gonna keep my eye out, sit here and watch, maybe get some video of that, maybe spot some deer, pigs. But this just looks really good in here. As we move through the area, I spotted the antler tips of a good rusa stag bedded on a levee between the water. I decided to have Danielle stalk in with me and see if we could get close enough for a shot.
stag, maybe 60 yards, bedded away. Danielle and I are sneaking up 50 yards. This is all live. Danielle back there. This stag is about 50 yards. I'm gonna keep sneaking up. He's bedded facing away. It's good. Looks good. That was incredible. I spotted this Rusa stag just bedded off this game trail between these two little ponds or lakes. It's just an incredible backdrop. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. It's like, it's just gorgeous out here. This has just been an adventure so far. Come all the way to the outback of Australia with you. And normally I do these things solo, but to have you with me, and it's just awesome. Like, Stocking in on that buck and knowing you're right behind me and getting to experience that is more about the experience than the size of the rack. Like, there's some big Rusa deer running around and I'm gonna keep chasing them, but I couldn't pass that one up with you with me. We got camp meat. That was a great buck. And like, I just, I was at full draw long enough. Like, I couldn't wait any longer for him to stand because otherwise it's just gonna be a bad shot or him get up and run away. And he's quartering away, so I just aimed back and it looks perfect. He's down just right there, so. Oh, this thing's awesome. They're just a cool animal, just a warrior. Like, scars all over his neck, hardly any hair, very little meat left just cut up. He's got a puncture wound in his other side that has actually grown over and then healed back. So like an old puncture wound where he got stabbed and still kicking. Like it, it's probably weeks old. Just a cool, aggressive animal. And just running hard, he's bedded there. And when I roared at him, He's like, I'm not getting up, but also I could see the sun just like gleaning off his eye. The sun was directly behind me. And I don't think he could make out what was going on. Just a quick, perfect shot. This is cool. It's a great experience. So beautiful here. Gonna get him cut up and make some camp meat. Gonna probably do a little barbecuing tomorrow. Let the meat age a little bit. It's gonna be awesome. This is dinner. It's just a cool feeling to be able to come out here and in a foreign land and bring your bow and just kind of explore and live off what's here. And there's deer and there's fish and it's just uh, it's an incredible place. Pretty easy to get out here. Oh, cane toad. If I've learned anything in my life, it's this. If you're fortunate enough to find a woman that's excited to walk around barefoot in the Australian bush with you, marry her. With two deer down, we still have plenty of time to soak in this wild place. 
We're planning on spending the rest of the week exploring and helping some friends out in the area. I'll also take some of the mornings to venture out solo to see if I can't find a true giant.